couple of people have said to us about the pet passport scheme. We we filmed it when we last came back on our Benelux trip, and um, we covered a little bit of the pet passport scheme, but we didn't really go into it in much detail. Quite a few people have uh, have uh, said on forums and that about the pet passport scheme. A load of questions about it. I mean, the best point of um, information for uh, the Pet Passport Scheme is the government website, the www.gov.uk slash take hyphen pet hyphen abroad. Uh, so you can have a look at that. And all I've done here is I've, I've just done a little printout of sort of the bullet points uh, of taking your pet abroad. So I'm just going to go through some of that and show you some of the video uh, that we took when we came back from Belgium. So a little back. Background, uh, Poppy's nearly, well, she'll be four in August, won't she? Five. Five in August. I mean, yeah, time flies. In 2014, when she was quite young, we took her to the vet to get the pet passport organised. Uh, so the pet does all of the, the paperwork for you, and you end up with one of these. It costs £88.28 for the privilege, so I'm not sure what it costs now. My guess would be it's a bit more. Um, it covers... And this is quite important, it covers coming back into the UK after being abroad. It's nothing to do with leaving the country. All the checks are done coming back into the country. And it covers pets that are cats, dogs or ferrets. It doesn't cover budgies, goldfish, tortoise, lizards or anything else like that. I suppose you can't microchip a tortoise can you really there you go and it covers um, those pets coming in from the eu or what they call listed countries there's a list of listed countries would you believe and it includes countries like gibraltar iceland norway but you'll also need a pet passport if you're coming back from unlisted countries and there's another great big long list of unlisted countries a couple of notable mentions on that list australia canada Hong Kong, Japan, and the USA. So, you must get your pet microchipped um, before or at the same time as their rabies vaccination. And if you don't, they need to be vaccinated again. It's probably worth, probably would just stay here whilst we're talking about this. It's probably also worth mentioning that having your pet microchipped is actually a legal requirement in this country now. So there's no excuse not to have it done. You must get your dog, cat or ferret vaccinated against rabies uh, before it can travel. And your vet needs proof um, that your pet is at least 12 weeks old. So you can't do it before they're 12 weeks old, before vaccination. You must wait 21 days after the vaccination before you can bring your pet back into the UK from another EU country, another country we accept passports from, or an unlisted country. And you must follow certain rules after having your pet vaccinated if you're traveling to the UK from an unlisted country. And these mainly include blood tests for the rabies vaccination. Boosters. You must get regular booster vaccinations for your pet. And you can check your pet passport to find out when your booster vaccination is due. That's the booster for the rabies we're talking about here, not your annual vaccination. It's normally three years, isn't it, for your rabies? Rabies normally lasts three years. Yeah. Most yeah. other vaccination vaccinations are just a year and an annual thing. And you have to get it before it runs out. So yeah. made that mistake with the other dogs, yeah. didn't we? Don't yeah. let it lapse. Don't let it lapse. It's got to be before it yeah. runs out. Okay. So the vaccination record in the pet passport, well Poppy's off now, includes your pet's date of birth, microchip number, the date it was put in, and where it is on your pet's body, the vaccination date, the vaccine number and product name, vaccine batch number, the date the vaccine is valid until the vet's signature and contact details. So I'm going to try and cover that in here. So we've got marking of the animal, where, where the actual microchip is, um, the name of the vet, and their stamp, and 
the vaccination against rabies itself. And it says when it's valid from, valid until. So as you can see, they last quite a long time. This, this is Tara's yeah, um, yeah. pet passport, and that was done in, in um, about this time last year. Yeah, yeah. So it's valid until um, 2020. 2020. Okay. And where's the other bit? Is that it? That's it, isn't That's it? it? That's yeah. it for that bit. Okay. Tape worm treatment for dogs. This is the treatment that you get at the foreign vet. And that vet must treat your dog for tape worm and record it in the pet passport uh, every time you want to come back into the UK. Now the treatment must be given no less than 24 hours and no more than 120 hours, that's five days, before you enter the UK. And you can be refused entry, your dog can be refused entry, or put into quarantine if you miss any of those dates and it's as we we found out when we saw someone with that particular trouble if they don't record the time when that was done mm. you can still be refused entry and you don't want that it's a little bit about short trips uh, if you leave in the uk for a short trip you're going on a booze cruise um, your dog must be treated by a vet before you go and you need to wait 24 hours before re-entering the UK uh, and return within 120 hours or you need to get the treatment abroad. And then you, when you get back, you've got to get it treated within 28 days of returning to the UK. So the information your vet needs to record. Let's find that bit. So it says in the, in the, on the website, as we said, the 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 um, I'll do it again. The name and manufacturer of the product, which is this bit, the date and time they treated your dog, and their stamp and signature, which is in the book. Okay. So here's some here's some clips from my Benelux trip, and this is uh, trip number seventeen, pet passports. And the last post. Yeah. Oh, they're fastly made. Yeah, yeah what a kerfuffle about nothing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, both of them. No, it is just a three the microchip. Yeah, yeah. I think Poppy thinks she's going to be zapped or something. Well, I think Poppy thinks she's getting an injection. Yeah. Well, I don't know what Tara's excuse is. Yeah, what's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> Very nice fit. I was say, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, fun. Very friendly. <laughs> yeah. 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 How much did it cost? Uh, 30 so euros, 80, I think. What each? No. no. Both. Both? Both and two? Yeah. I yeah. thought it was probably because we had got the worming tablet. Yeah. 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 Well, that's not so bad. As you can see, we went to a vet in Belgium. And uh, the purpose of going to the vet is, to, is twofold, is that they do the tapeworm treatment and they do a physical check. The vet we went to are called de Gaudenport and they're in Ypres in Belgium. They were very friendly, uh, spoke good English. And uh, they stamp your book basically, they stamp your pet passport. So what this, the bits that they stamp are here. So the anti echinocis treatment. <laughs> um, so the manufacturer uh, and the date and time now I mentioned that it's very important that you get the time stamped on there I think that we were in a queue um, and they're stamped there we were in a queue at the pet passport control because someone hadn't got the, the time stamped on their book the other bit that's important to get is this the clinical examination and it says the animal shows no sign of disease and is fit to be transported for the intended journey date and their stamp so you get those stamps done and then um, a couple of days later we're headed off for pet passport she just confuses you Oh, yes.
be the pet bit, don't we? Yeah. pet reception. First uh, issue is letting the dogs have a wee. There's an area over here. Okay. Come on then girls. Come on. There's even a bowl. Lots of smells for you girls. I've never seen it, it's bizarre no, before. Bit of a cube, yeah. yeah. Tara's decided to make herself comfy. Tara, you had your um, microchip scanned, haven't you? Yeah. So you're all ready for your. You've got your boarding pass. Yeah. yeah. Got to fit that to the windscreen. Yeah. So two dogs. Two dogs. Yeah. yeah. Poppy says uh, that was awful and she hated it, but she passed. You thought you were at the vet, didn't you? You did. We're done and we're ready and we're off. So as you can see from the, the video at the pet passport control, um, we arrived at the pet passport control with all our documentation from, well, all our documentation, the pet passport, our own passports, the boarding passes for the shuttle. And you go into pet passport, you queue up in, the, in our case, don't normally queue, but like I said, it's probably because someone didn't have the right paperwork, there was a bit of a queue. You get to the, the counter, uh, and then they check the pet passport, your pa passport, your boarding pass, and they then run a, a microchip scanner over your, your animal. It beeps. In our case, Poppy nearly jumped out, out of the place. skin. <laughs> uh, and what they do then is they give you a little thing to hang off your rear view mirror or your rear view camera in our case to say that your dogs have been checked. And after that, it's just a case then of following the normal sort of procedure that you take when you go through the tunnel, you get stopped a couple of times and they then wave you on and uh, French pass passport control look at your own passports and you get on the tunnel or wherever. If you're going on a ferry, you get on the ferry and off you go. And that's it. That really is it. It is that simple once, once you've got all your paperwork stamped. Like I say, it was quite important to get those bits um, that you've got the date and time uh, of the tapeworm treatment and you've got the fact that they're fit to travel stamped in there. We had, when we first went on the, the shuttle, like I said, we had problems where we didn't have the right breed of dog written down. But uh, That was old, paper, that was old paperwork, paperwork then, so, wasn't it? Before yeah. you had these passports, it's so much easier now yeah. because yeah. it's all recorded in there. It's all recorded in here. Uh, I've no idea what's going to happen after Brexit with no. with this. We'll we'll be an unlisted country in our own list, won't we? Presumably, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, oh. anyway. <clears throat> yeah, that's another subject altogether. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, if you like the video, um, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. Hit the subscribe icon so you get regular updates. And if you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the the bit below and if you, 
if you've got any really technical questions, I would honestly, I would get you to have a look at the website, the government website. Most of the que uh, most of your questions are answered on there. Our experience was overall fairly positive. Mm, we were worried, weren't we? But it was just it, plain it, sailing. Plain, yeah. Well, what sailing? It's going. It's on going the tunnel, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. We don't like sailing, do we? So no, <laughs> that's why we're on the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll catch up with you in the next one.